So we've got some Disney updates for you. First of all, Epcot is going to be entering food and wine on July 15th. So there's only like a 10 day break between the flower and garden and food and wine. Um, the only thing about that is it kind of seems like there's just always like food kiosks. And um, as a local, it's a little bit like, nah, you know, you get a little jaded, but I do understand if you're coming here to experience Epcot with all of those neat options that like that expands your opportunity to come and visit. One of the first things you notice when you come into Wilderness Lodge is just how much wood there is in here. So the ceiling is made of wood. There's all of these railings. Uh, there is a great amount of stone, but it's so rustic and comfortable. And one thing that you might not notice are these floral arrangements. And I just had to come up and smell them. I tried not to touch them too much because I don't want them to wilt. But amigos, this is real. What a gorgeous arrangement. And then these feathers, just really fascinating, really beautiful touches to the interior of this lobby, which is just totally ginormous. So on Twitter, I saw this rumor going around that Disney was going to get rid of a bread service. Just think what floor are we going to? Lobby. Lobby. Um, but it's not true, amigos. They released an official statement. All table services are going to keep serving bread. So don't flip it out. Free bread is here to stay. <laughs> More on the lobby from another perspective. We're on the fourth floor now. So one thing I didn't notice were these stairs that go up and down, as well as these images that are around the top of these lamps. So it looks like the um, Native Americans hunting buffalo. And you get a better appreciation for the totem poles. You can see down below, there's the Whispering Canyon Cafe. That is a buffet restaurant. Just can't get over the ambiance in here. It is so rustic. Complete with a working fireplace on the third level floor, which for the month of July, I will admit is a little bit warm, but still a really neat place to come, especially because they keep the lobby pretty chill news for out-of-town guests they're going to start opening up some of the resorts so uh, I think Port Orleans is the first one to open up and then we're also going to see Polynesian and Animal Kingdom Lodge and funny enough we went to the Animal Kingdom Lodge during the pandemic it's a little lame because everything was closed we couldn't get any coffee we could barely get any food so maybe they just closed completely uh, and now they're reopening so more choices all near the magical center World, just in time for the 50th anniversary. So the bus had a 30 minute wait, so we're gonna try something different. We're gonna go over to the boat transportation, which is on the other end of the property. So you just have to walk through the lobby and then back to the uh, back left, and then keep going onto this really cool boardwalk area, which takes you through nature all the way to the boats. Oh, you gotta pass the pool too. Yes, watch all the kids splash. We are walking from the Magic Kingdom entrance to the Grand Floridian. You can see it across the lake and there's a really nice path. It's well lit. I think it, there is a limit to the times that you can come through here, but definitely daytime and past the firework. We're here at Gasparilla Island Grill and we did the mobile order and look, they're preparing the order. Like they're literally flipping it as we speak. Seating is fully open and uh, there may be a few less tables than usual but in the back if you wander around you'll find some booths where you can nestle in behind the microwaves and there he is actually we came in uh, we placed the mo mobile order when we got here and the girl who works here was nice enough to push our order up to ready status so it was like not going to be the window wasn't going to be for like 25 minutes and i asked and she said just let me know the order number and she went up to her little ipad thingy and uh clicked us through so we'll only have to wait i guess as long as it takes to make the food chicken brie let's see what did we get oh, it's like a tray inside a box look at that Ooh, that big ooey gooey brie cheese is gonna be amazing so I cut it in half so you guys can get a view of this just gooey brie cheese and chicken and 
all that deliciousness. We also got the strawberry shortcake. Ooh. Can't wait to dive into that. The best part of staying at the Grand Floridian is outside of Gasparilla's, you actually get to see the Disney fireworks. So off in the distance, you can see Cinderella's castle, albeit it's a little small than if you were at, actually at the parks. But you get to see the whole firework display and the music gets piped through. So you can hear the show too. And the best rooms in the house will be right above Gasparilla, where you can see people have come out onto their balconies in order to watch the fireworks. They even have a cute little table set up. I don't mean to creep on them too hard. But we're all ready to go. There's lots of people here waiting to see everything go down. just came from there, which is the Grand Floridian. We came there via this beautiful boat. And now that we're back at Magic Kingdom, look at all of the people who are leaving after the fireworks. Wow, these crowds are really impressive. This is like pre-COVID numbers. Look at all of these people. They're going to the uh, boat to the TTA, completely full. And then back behind us is the line up to the monorail. So lots and lots and lots of crowds. Shout out to our friend who works in engineering for Disney to figure out how many monorails have to run at any given time to try to get these crowds home in a reasonable amount of time. Amigos, thank you for joining us tonight. We hope you enjoyed our video. And until next time, hasta luego.